All right, in this video, we're going to look at a few sample questions that you may see or something similar on the DMA-10 portion of the placement test. And here are the topics for DMA-10. Operations with integers. Integers are like nice numbers, no fractions, no decimals. Uh, yes, integers can be positive and negative, such as negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so forth. Other things, problem events that require the use of integers and integer operations, basically real world problems with integers, basic exponents, square roots and order of operations, perimeter and area of rectangles and triangles, angle facts and the Pythagorean theorem. Now though I might not cover all these topics in this video, uh, I definitely cover all these topics at my website um, which is right here. So feel free to visit that but again I want to show you some sample questions that will look similar to the questions you may see on the placement test or in your DMA 10 class if you're in DMA 10 right now you will definitely see some questions that are similar to this let's have a look first one on a summer day in Benton the low temperature of 75 degrees was reached at 6 in the morning the high temperature was reached 9 hours later after the temperature rose 16 degrees Fahrenheit what was the high temperature in Benton that day? Now, math problems like this, sometimes there's extra information. And uh, these numbers here, the 6 in the morning and 9 hours later, honestly, they don't matter in this problem. The reason why is because the low temperature was at 75 degrees Fahrenheit, and it says the temperature rose 16 degrees Fahrenheit. That does not mean the temperature was 16 degrees because it rose 16 degrees from the 75 and that's what they want you to do here you, they want you to add these two numbers together because you want to find that high temperature so 75 plus 16 you can definitely uh, you definitely want to be able to do this without a calculator um, you will not have a calculator pop up on the screen when you're doing this type of problem so 5 and 6 is 11 put down your 1 carry your 1 over 7 and 1 and 1 that's going to give us 9 so our high temperature is going to be 91 degrees Fahrenheit. Now I'll throw out some multiple choice tips as well like we could definitely eliminate A and B because those are uh, pretty close to 75. These are not even 10 degrees higher than 75, neither one of these. And, and I mean assuming you want, definitely want to be able to add so that's your definite choice right there without a doubt. Number two here, which of the four labeled points on the number line above has the greatest absolute value? absolute value all you want to do is make these numbers positive if they are not positive for example a is on negative four well here's your absolute value symbol it looks like two long lines and the absolute value of negative four make the number positive so it's positive four all right letter b is on negative two the absolute value of negative two that's the symbol for absolute value the absolute value of negative two is positive two now c and d over here uh, C says, okay, it's on 2, so the absolute value of 2 is 2. I want to point this out because I don't want you to think you just changed the sign. You need to make the number positive. Since it already was, we don't change it. The absolute value of 2 is 2. The absolute value of negative 2 is 2. So we're making all these numbers positive. So the same thing is going to happen here for D. The absolute value of 3 is 3. So which one of these has the greatest absolute value? Turns out A has the biggest one. Even though it's the smallest number on this number line, its absolute value is the greatest. Now, you may wonder why I encourage you to check out my website and I do talk about absolute value a little bit more in detail. But again, I'm trying to give you quick facts here to help you place out of this uh, DMA-10 module. Number three, this is an order of operations problem. So a reminder here is please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. We want to work with parentheses, then exponents. We want to multiply and divide from left to right. Whichever one comes first, you don't always multiply before you divide. It depends on which one comes first. And then the same thing applies for addition and subtraction. We want to add and subtract from left to right, whichever one comes first. Let's look at this example here. I'm going to write it a little bit bigger. Or I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. And uh, let's go with order of operations. So parentheses. Do we see some parentheses? Absolutely. This will be a non-calculator problem. So negative 2 minus 4. 
Um, what I tell myself here is this. I see two signs and these signs are alike. I got a negative two and essentially a negative four. When my signs are alike, I add them. And then I keep that sign. So two and four is six. We're going to make this negative six. Think about that. If you lose two, then you lose four more. You've lost six. So that's what we have inside of those parentheses. Now, do we need to bring the parentheses down? I mean, you can. It wouldn't be wrong, but we don't need them. Because all we're going to do is take whatever we get out of here, which is negative 6, and then we're going to multiply it by 8. Again, no calculator here. A negative times a positive or a positive times a negative will always be a negative number. And 8 times 6 is 48, but you need to remember to make your answer negative since a negative times a positive is a negative. So that's our answer right there, negative 48. All right. Question number four, the sum of Cheryl's scores on the first four quizzes in her history class was 364 points. So think of this, quiz one, quiz two, quiz three, quiz four. We don't know what grade she got on each one of these individually, but the sum of all these scores, if we knew this score and this score and this score and this score, if we added them all up, we would get 364. Now, she scores 96 points on her next quiz, which will be quiz number five. It tells us in the problem, um, she already took four, so the next one will be quiz five. So that's going to be a 96. Now again, we don't know each grade individually, but we know the sum of these will be 364. Now, the question says, what will be her average score for the five quizzes? The way you find an average is you add them all up, and you divide by how many quizzes. This, in this case, we had five quizzes, so we want to add up each quiz, add them all up, and then divide by five. But again, we don't know these individual scores, but it doesn't matter. Since we know all four of these is 364 points, it don't matter what these are. We know it adds to give us 364. So let's take 364 and let's add this fifth quiz of 96. Six and four is 10, zero carrier one, 9 plus 6 is 15, plus 1 is 16, put down your 6, carry your 1, 3 and 1 is 4. So we got 460 points total. Now obviously that is not her average. That is, that's ridiculous. Um, 5 quizzes, so we want to take the 460 and divide it by 5. That's how you find an average. And again, the reason why I'm dividing by 5 is because there are 5 quizzes up here. So uh, 5 doesn't go into 4. 5 times 9 is 45. That's as close as we can get to 46 without going over. So 9 times 5 is 45. Remember to subtract here. 46 minus 45 is 1. Bring down your 0. 5 goes into 10 two times. And 2 times 5 is 10, so we have a remainder of 0. This is going to be her average for those 5 quizzes, a 92. All right. That one's kind of tricky because what some people may do is they may take this plus this and they may divide by two because we added two numbers. But you got to remember this 364 was essentially um, four quiz grades already added together. So be careful with that one. And now one more sample question here. The square root of 529, no calculator. There will probably, probably be no calculator for the DMA 10 questions. No calculator whatsoever. Now, finding this particular square root can can be tedious but since this is a multiple choice question let me throw out a very uh, helpful multiple choice tip here on um, the square root of 529 now you may know the square root of 100 is 10 hopefully you know that one the square root of 144 is 12 um, maybe you know the square root of 400 what's the square root of 400 you know that one that's 20 well that right there if you know that that's going to help you eliminate some things all right, square root of 529, that's going to be bigger than the square root of 400 because all we're trying to find out is what number times itself is going to give us 529. 10 times 10 gives us 100. So the square root of 100 is 10. 12 times 12 is 144. So the square root of 144 is 12. 20 times 20 is 400. So the square root of 400 is 20. As you can see, as these numbers get bigger here, our answer gets bigger. Well, since 529 is bigger than 400, our square root should be bigger than 20 because the square root of 400 is 20. That, therefore, we can automatically knock out that one. That's just one way to approach this problem. 
Now something else you could do is you could just come over to the side and start multiplying your numbers. Like we could take 23 times 23. And let's see what it gives us. Let's just multiply them out and see what it gives us. 3 times 3 is 9. Uh, 3 times 2 is 6. Remember, if you're multiplying two-digit numbers, you got to you know, add a 0 down here before you move over to this 2. So 2 times 3 is 6. 2 times 2 is 4. Let's add this together and see what we get. 9, 6 and 6 is 12, 2, carry our 1, 4 plus 1 is 5, 529. Look at there, lucky guess on the first shot. But it turns out the square root of 529 is 23. Uh, 26 would be, 26 times 26 is bigger, um, so and 27 times 27 is bigger. So this is one of those cases where, yeah, look at your answers, and if you know what a square root means, it means you should be able to take this number times itself, and get that. And if you do get that, therefore the square root of 529 is 23. So here are five sample questions that you may see on the DMA10 uh, placement test. But again, there's plenty more. You know, I didn't cover Pythagorean theorem here. Um, we didn't look at any perimeter problems here. So please visit this website. Um, it's, it's organized. It's got a DMA section. It's got a DMA 10 section. And I promise you can find videos related to perimeter and area as well as angles and the Pythagorean theorem. But that's it for this video. Hope it helped.